Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. For those of you who don't know, I started Grumpy Old Fart to express my political and social opinions and to say things that I felt needed to be said. Unfortunately, YouTube, YouTube started giving me strikes. As a hedge against this happening, I have created backup YouTube channels, Grumpy Old Gamer and Grumpy Old Ufologist. I also created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can find all of my stuff there, including my political opinion and current events. The link to my Rumble channel, as well as links to, to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing an AD&D advice video on ebb and flow. As a dungeon master, one of the most important things you need to do is to observe your players. The main goal of a dungeon master is to provide a fun game for your players. If your players are having fun, you have succeeded. If not, you have failed. One of the biggest parts of this observation is ebb and flow. You need to take note of the feel of the game. I've been playing this game for more than... I started back in the 70s. I started running the game in 1979, 1980. I've been playing a long time. I've been running it a long time. And it it's it boggles my mind when a dungeon master doesn't understand the feel of the game. What I mean by that is your players' reactions to things, their general mood. It takes time to... to to figure out how to spot things like that, the signs of when players are having fun and when they're not, when they're bored and when they're not, when they're restless when they're not, you know, that kind of thing. If the game is slowing down, you need to have options to liven it up. And as a game master, a dungeon master, your job is to provide this catalyst. And what I mean by that is, you need to have stuff ready for if the game slows down. You need to have stuff ready for when there is downtime. You need to have stuff ready for when when you need to perk things up a little bit. This does not mean throwing a monster at them or having bandits waiting in the wings, although sometimes that could be fun. Uh, for example, a non-player character with a problem for the player characters to help with could be fun. Um, you know, a, a kid runs up, help, help, I can't find my dog. Just anything, you know. Uh, some kind of obstacle. For example, a river with no bridge that they have to cross. A forest fire, a flood, etc. That could work. A minor emergency, like a lack of supplies, a water shortage. Uh, missing items stolen by bandits or <laughs> raccoons, whatever. That could provide a diversion and give them something to liven up the game without actually being dangerous. Um, an encounter with the king's men who ask questions about some random event which nobody in the group could, you know, even knows about could be fun because later on you could tie that into your campaign. The options are only limited by your storyline thus far because your imagination should be endless. It's the, it's the storyline, what you can fit into the moment. Good storytelling for your player, cons for your player characters consists of several elements and I use two basic philosophies when I run a game. First off, I introduce multiple seemingly random elements of the story. I let my players weave these elements together into the tapestry of the story. Then I let my players resolve the story. The other one is, the second one is, I introduce a problem, I let the player character strive to find a way to solve the problem collecting objects, discovering information, etc. And then I let the player characters solve the problem. The build-up is the key to a successful resolution. Um, build-up needs to be steady so that the players aren't getting restless. It can't be so slow that the players are bored. You see what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's balance there. In the first philosophy, the buildup is in the player characters weaving the elements into the tapestry. 
In the second philosophy, the buildup starts when the problem is discovered. The first philosophy is kind of like a pyramid. The, the pieces are all scattered around for the player characters to gather together and climb to the top, which is the resolution. Philosophy 2 is the tree method used in many adventure movies. You run the PCs up the tree, throw rocks at them until they find a way down. And it's, it's, it's different for every group. Because your, your group, every different, every group of players has its own dynamic. You're going to have a leader, you're going to have followers, you're going to have uh, people with specific functions. They all have different dynamics. <clears throat> philosophy, the first philosophy is a little more cerebral, kind of like a murder mystery, and presents a problem the players have to solve. Philosophy 2 is a little more action-oriented, kind of like a movie, and is a race to stop the villain. A good campaign, at least in my opinion, uses both of these methods in tandem to allow your player characters the best of both worlds. The issue you really have to watch for, as I, as I said in the beginning of this video, is the ebb and flow of the adventure. If your players are stuck and really cannot figure out your clues, they will be frustrated. If your players are working to solve clue after clue after riddle after riddle, ad infinitum, they're going to get bored. Either one will not be fun for the player characters. The answer to this is more clues that help solve the clues they are having problems with or a random encounter of the types I mentioned before to liven the game up a bit. Sometimes a diversion is just the thing. The main virtue in all of this as a dungeon master is patience. Let the story unfold in the player's time. If it takes them three game sessions to figure out that the minor villain is the captain of the guard, so be it. But the players have to figure it out. Giving them the obvious answers undermines the fun. Getting back to the ebb and flow aspect, if the players are stuck and really have no idea, maybe you need to let them find some more some more clues. You know, something that illuminates the situation a little better. Here's the one thing you really have to be careful of. Never, never, never tell them the answers out of frustration. This will do nothing but demean them, ruin the story, and build resentment. All players want to beat the Dungeon Master, and in this situation, that means they have to find the clues and information to defeat the villains you create. That way, when they physically defeat your villain, they will have that oh yeah moment that everybody likes. Never ever deny your players that moment. It's what they play the game for. You know what I'm saying? Part of ebb and flow is knowing when to back off. If your players figure ways to beat you, so be it. That's your job. I've played with player with, with dungeon masters who they get angry when the players win. That's the whole point of the game. The players have to succeed in a grand adventure. Your job ultimately is to lose. Think about that. Again, this is just advice from an old hack war gamer. <laughs> you folks have a good day. God bless one and all.